I gotta have more cowbell, baby. And I'd be doing myself a disservice and every member of this band if I didn't perform the hell out of this. Guess what? I got a fever. And the only prescription is more... Platinum Channel. Welcome to the Platinum Channel Weekend Review. It's November 12th, 2023, and I cannot believe it's already November. Just a couple weeks away from Thanksgiving, and there's a lot to be thankful for this year. In this video, we're going to jump into Know Thy Company and its stock movement. Two, we're going to talk about bonds and bond yields in the 30-year U.S. Treasury uh, auction failure, along with a review of the uh, SPX, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and of course, the NASDAQ 100. And on top of that, Mark's going to go over the watch list and review the different trades that were placed in there, along with a lesson in swing trading. On Friday's Platinum Channel video call, which if you're a Platinum member, you get access to it. It's 11.30 every Friday uh, Central Time. So please jump in. If you're a Platinum member, please join us for that video. And if you're not a Platinum member, you should subscribe because you get a whole ton of stuff and a whole lot of knowledge to make you a wealthier investor. But Paul on the call talked about his trade on wind in, uh, in resorts, wind resorts, I believe the symbol is W-Y-N-N, and how he went about trading it after a miss on earnings because of uh, the strike they're having. And he said this, which we thought was really interesting and really actually, actually a good thing, and that is know a company, and if you know its price movement and how they function as a company, you could trade it and just trade that all day long. 82. And what I did is I purchased, my, my girlfriend had win and I sold it, you know, a few months back and she made good money. And she said, that's a great, great company. I don't know why. And we learned it was because there was a strike and it's a few other issues. So we went back in and we're in the green now. Um, and I set limits and I could get out now with a gain. But I'm noticing some of these good companies that have bad earnings, you know, they get killed in the morning. That first half they're getting crushed. And usually they bounce right back up. Like I noticed the same thing with Arm, you know, with a few other good companies that they really get killed with the uh, after hours trading. And you could do a quickie if, if you're if you trust, if you know the company to some degree. Man, you are kind of a cowboy. I, I got it at 84 and I'm like, maybe I should get out now. <laughs> yeah, you're at 85, 60. That's, you know, it's, it's riding that lower Bollinger Band, it went down below. And a lot of times they'll ride above it, you know. But if it does go down, you never know what's going to happen. You know, you've got a MACD that's dying. Now you've got a stochastic that's dying, RSI's dying. <clears throat> so you, you're a lot, you have a lot more uh, risk tolerance than I do. Well, I think what happens is is we've sat on that stock for a few years. You we've know it. Win. Yeah, you get yeah. to know a stock and you're like, okay, what yeah. happened here? There's, there's a strike, there's this going on. You get to know this, just like you, Berkshire, you kind of know that stock. Yep, that's true. So you, that's, that's, why you're, the, yeah. that's why you find favorites, you know, and you you, you kind of go off your chart in your trading guidelines sometimes because just what you said. Now, as many of you know, I am big into the bond world. I love bonds because the bond market is the biggest market out there. It's six times the size of the equity market, right? Who knew that, right? But bonds are typically boring. Yet, what we are seeing in the bond market is the end of a 30-year bond bull market, and that's when yields go down and values go up. Now, with that said, what is happening now in the bond market? Well, this week, the 10-year and the 30-year treasury yields all along with the two-year treasury yields all came down, which signaled a whole narrative on the CNBCs of the world about, oh, the bond values are going to uh, rally again, and we're going to see the Fed change its course, and they're going to lower interest rates. I mean, I saw this question. It's one of those question poll questions on CNBC on Friday. You know, what are you? Do you? What are the chances of? the Fed lowering rates anytime soon. When he's just indicated this week, 
he's not going to and that he still believes inflation is a major problem, which means he's gonna raise rates again. Okay, so in this segment, we get into TLT, bond yields, and what's happening there and what they can be telling you about the future and what is to come. The U.S. high yield bonds funds received 6.29 billion. That's the biggest weekly info since middle of April, 2022. So that's your high yield corporates. Yeah. Basically uh, junk, you know, right. Uh, U.S. That's... bond funds, just the bond funds itself for U.S. of back uh, mass 3.61 billion of inflows. That was the biggest amount since July 5th. And the U.S. equity fund, funds did bring in about 1.9 billion. That's the first weekly info in eight weeks. And it's probably because, you know, we're seeing this big uh, bump up in the tech sector uh, this week, you know, because of the bonds and, you know, the Treasury's prices coming down. Yeah. But the investor was interesting because the report went on to say investors pulled a net 1.9 billion out of U.S. short and intermediate government and Treasury funds. So just what you said, Trent. You know, they're not interested in the longer intermediate terms, which is why these, you know, these market, these treasury auctions were so poor. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's a, I like the bond market because of uh, a teacher. I, I took a class to prep for the Series 7 back in 99, and it was a young guy. And he actually worked for Bear Stearns, or he was retired from Bear Stearns, and he was in his early 40s. And he talked about bonds like they were the the king of the hill. And he, he exposed to me, like, this is why these are important and why people should pay attention to them. And it was something I was digging into, some charts on the U.S. 10-year treasury and the German 10-year boon. And going back to June of 2018 and where all of a sudden you saw a slide in the yield, meaning people are buying these things up to their uh, through uh, June of 2018 through 2019, it accelerated into t March of 2019. And if you start to think about historically what happened between that time and March of 2022 or 2020, I've always believed that somebody knew something, that something that was going to happen in a big way, which then drew, drove the German 10-year boom into a negative, what, 6.4% yield and, and brought the 10-year down to, I think, a 0.52 or 0.55% yield, which, and then all of a sudden COVID happened. And it's like, is the bond market telling us something right now? You know, and that's how I've always looked at, at the bond market in a sense. So anyhow. The bond market is, is six times bigger than the equity market. Right. So what people have been trying to do, you've heard about people shorting the bond market and then getting out. This is TLT and this is the, the treasury bond ETF for 20 to 30 years. You can see we've had this long slide down uh, as, as, as a, uh, Yields, uh, you can see, are, are now turning around. So people are coming back in to the Treasury. The long terms here, we see this week or the, today, you know, we're down. But in hopes that if the Treasury yields come down, uh, that the price will go up. Uh, and if you go back, I believe, you know, like in 2008, you can you can follow some people that did, uh, made a lot of money in the TLTs when the markets went down. Uh, and, and the yields got hit and the price of the bond went up. So that's what they're talking about. But TLT is something I've been watching. You know, it's now crossed, you know, it's right at the 50. It's above the nine. Uh, and I just want to watch it and see what see what happens. Mark gets into a review of all of the indexes, the S&P 500, the D, uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average, and the triple Qs. And what they have in common this week is they're moving sideways. So let's go check out that segment of Friday's Platinum Swing Trading Call. Well, let's look at what we've seen in the markets today or this week. And <clears throat> here's the here's the S&P 500. This is today. I don't know why I keep blinking. This is yesterday, Wednesday, Tuesday. Here's Monday. So basically, this was last week. You see all these gaps that we have. And then it got up to the intermediate resistance level and just kind of leveled off. And we saw this before. Uh, when you go back into October, it did the same thing. 
right before we had the October dump. So are we going to do the same thing or not? I don't know. You saw the nine came up here, touched right on the bottom. Nine's coming right up here too. It's, it's looking eerily the same, and I'm seeing a little bit of a flattening of the MACD crossover, you know, a stochastic. We are high, so you could see that a lot. The RSI is still there, but, you know, we're just we're having trouble with this resistant level at this point with the SPY. We go over to the Dow Jones. It'll come up for me. We're seeing the same pattern that we just <clears throat> saw. It came up. Here's the intermediate resistance level. Did the same thing. You can see we're just sideways uh, since last week. We came up. You got gaps here that'll need to be filled at some point. And we're just we're just humming along sideways, waiting for something to happen. Is it going to go up or is it going to go down? Well, next week, you know, we have CPI and PPI. And I, I suppose we're waiting for that. Um, but, you know, right now we're, we're kind of flat. And then we go over to the Qs. These are all tradable that follow the indexes, as you guys probably know. So what do you think the about the CPI coming out next week? What's your thoughts on it? Uh, you know, I don't really care. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, it doesn't really matter in swing, but you to have me, to have an opinion of where well, I think where it's, it's going to stand. I, because it's, I think it's, it's actually important where it's going. I mean, the ISM keeps going down. The ISM yeah. keeps going down. There's no manufacturing happening. It's compressing. Yep. So, you know, we have a problem. And that has you to want, come out. If that, that means there's no demand, right? You want my true opinion, you know, I think yeah, that, I that, the CPI and the PPI are crap because let's <laughs> take out, let's take out food and energy, the two things we actually need and say, oh, look, inflation is down. And the other thing is, oh, inflation is down. Well, it's not. We're still going up. We're just not going up as much. The carton of milk has not come down to where it was, you know, when all this crap started. Gasoline is not down to where it was when all this started. Oh, my so, God. Yeah. I mean, so... I I drove down I think to Boca Raton. I paid five dollars a gallon down there. Oh, yep. crazy! I mean, yep. five bucks, four ninety nine a gallon. Wow. Yeah, you should, you guys should live in Canada. We're we're over six bucks. We're a dollar sixty, buck sixty nine uh, a liter, which oh. is uh, wow. Three multi multiply that times three point eight is. Per gallon. So wow, wow, that, that's a yeah. big sucking. Don't sound. start with, don't start with the gallon. You keep charging yep. five, six, seven dollars a gallon. The big sucking sound comes out of fixed incomes. Just remember, guys, that the inflation is coming down. We're we're getting the things are better. Yeah, yeah. where? Yeah, yeah. That's, well, again, so you ask, you ask maybe me on about your me. farm, maybe on your farm, but not here, my friend. No, no, you, you asked me about C, you asked me about CPI and PBI. I told you, Mike, what I think. I, you know, I understand I, what you're it, saying. I think it's, I think the report is full of crap. Like when you can pull out whatever you want to make your report look better, you know, and and people sit there and they'll discuss it, you know, on CNBC and they know oh, this is great news with CPI wow. and the PPI, and I'm like, are you kidding me? These people don't live in the same world we live in, guys. Uh, yeah. You know, we live in the real world. Well, the real, we see what is in, the real report is in the revisions, not the not oh, the yeah. report coming Again, out. Yeah. That tells you yep. the truth. Absolutely. Here's, a, here's the Qs, which is NASDAQ. You know, NASDAQ, you know, and the, and the tech stocks have been on a tear. But you can see, basically, I mean, it's gone up a little, but we're still kind of in a sideways pattern here. Looks about the same. Every Sunday, Mark updates his uh, watch list, his horizons list, and his below the 200-day moving average list. Now, today we're going to focus on the watch list and the three or four different trades I believe he made there as well. All three of them were winners. One of them was a loser. And to Mark's standards, it was a sizable loser. To most people, it's just a blip. But he gets into the different uh, elements of how he was trading those for positions on the watch list. So let's go check out that video. So this week we had NVIDIA and then we had CMC uh, Comcast, which was kind of a, a disaster, okay? Um, move it over just a little. I think uh, the Comcast of the worlds and these guys, anything to do with cable, they're in trouble. I mean, yeah. YouTube's gonna put them out of business. 
I, I agree, but you know, when you're swing trading, I look at the tarts and at the beginning of the week, it, it looked kind of promising, which is why I put it on here, but it's also why we got out, you know, I, I usually don't like to go to 3%, but it was $100.34. And I knew I was going to make it up in NVIDIA and in, in the Berkshire. So NVIDIA yesterday, it hit, uh, hit the upper Bollinger band. And that's where, uh, that's where my, it hit my limit and it gapped. Uh, above the intermediate resistance uh, a little bit. And so I said 27.55 is good enough for me or 6%, okay, and I got out. I'm still in Berkshire, but I got a I got an order in at Berkshire, and I'll show you where that's at. So the only loser this week was Comcast, but we made it up in other areas. So you're going to have losers. We have losers. Um, uh, but just depends, you know, nothing's, nothing's certain. Let's go over to... Uh... At the end of our call, we started getting into patterns of swing trading and how to identify. I put this out earlier or yesterday, maybe on snow, and this is the longer term view. And this is the whole theory of, of lower highs and lower lows. And you can see we going back, you know, to July or whatever, we hit a high, we came down and got a low. Came back up, lower high, Came back down, lower low. Came back up, lower high, lower low. And now we're coming up. We'll see what happens. But in order for this to turn around, we're going to need to see a lower low and a higher high. And then you know that in probability, we're probably seeing a trend reversal because the trend right now on Snowflake is still down. Uh, you mean a higher low? Of, a higher low, yeah, and a higher high. Sorry, I, I was doing all the low lows. <laughs> but if this, you know, if, if this doesn't get there and comes down below and we get a lower low, then it's going to continue down. And did Thank you. Went Perry and I were? Here's your I think two it was, year chart. Yeah, I think I think when was, when when Robert's talking about nothing, but he's talking about it, you know, it exactly. came out, it popped mm. up, and then if you look yeah. Yeah. from nothing burger. <laughs> I mean, if you were an investor and you got in up here, you're you're down. If you got in here, you're down. If you got in here, you're down. You know, that's I think that's what you're trying to say. Yeah. Uh, but you know, from my point of view, being I'm not investing in snow, um, I see a lot of opportunities for ups and downs and ups and downs and ups. You know, so that's why we do swing trades. You know. In closing, we have seen. A bit of a more interesting week than the week before, which was an up week after a number of down weeks. And this past week, we've seen the market, especially on Friday, rally up and close higher. The question is, are we in a upward trend that has sustained itself to the end of the year? Or are we just merely seeing a short covering or some short term rebound on a bear market uh, rally? And our, from what I'm seeing out there, well, markets will tell you what they're gonna do next week. And so we have to just wait and see. There's a lot going on in the world. There's the geopolitical side, there's war, social unrest, and there is the credit credit crunching right now where credit is, is retracting and people are coming up short on many things that they're used to paying for and having money for. So. This coming week will be interesting. Always use your process, build a process to better manage your money and create wealth. Losing money is not cool. It's not the cool thing to say, talk about. So don't lose it. Learn how to swing trade and apply that, not just to the short term, but also to the long term. So hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. Tell a friend about Best of US's Platinum channel. And if you're not a member, Sign up today, hit the subscription uh, link below and subscribe today. Peace, have a great week and God bless you.